Hello and welcome to the Pro Tipster Sports Betting Podcast. So hello there, Paddy here. We've changed the format a bit and we hope you're all going to love the new and improved Pro Tipster Sports Betting Podcast. From now on we'll be speaking more than just about football, although it'll still be our main focus of course, being the biggest and therefore best sport in the world. But we'll also be bringing you some more great pro tips for analysis from the pro tips for experts on a variety of sports, of course, including football, but as well tennis, basketball, ice hockey, baseball, and many more besides. This week we'll be kicking off with pro tips for Dan and Johnny to talk about football. We'll have pro tips for David on as well to speak about La Liga. Pro tips for Marco is unavailable this week, however, our Syria expert, but he'll be back next week, as will pro tips for Martin, who's on a well deserved break, but they'll be back soon. We'll also talk tennis and Winter Olympics ice hockey with pro tips to Johnny. And to top it all off, then we'll have some NBA and NHL from me as well. Right then, let's get it on. Joining me now, we have pro tipsters Dan and Johnny. And we're going to talk about some of the best footballing action from the weekend. Hello, men. Hi, yeah. Hey. Hope you're well, lads. Uh, yeah. Right, so uh, I've informed the listeners about the new format, so uh, I presume they're all as excited as we are about it. I say they can't wait, but uh, let's uh, let's start off with uh, some Premier League action. It's our only Saturday game, actually. Uh, third place Liverpool are taking on twelfth placed uh, Liverpool. Dan, um, interesting one this is because um, you look at uh, you look at West Ham. They're, they've done not too badly of late. They're up in twelfth. But um, David Moyes never does well when he goes to Anfield. Um, 14 competitive, competitive matches as Everton, Man U, Sunderland boss. Never won Ooh. at Anfield. Ooh. Never won. Wow. Uh, I know, it's a bit of a stat, isn't it? Um, Liverpool, uh, the last two times Liverpool and West Ham have met, Liverpool have won by uh, scoring four goals, uh, but they've never scored four or more goals in three consecutive games against a single opponent in the Premier League, so oh, challenge, long. challenge accepted, yeah. Dan. <laughs> um, and yeah, you look at Mo Salah as well. I mean, what a player! Um, I was reading that his current form uh, in home games this year, he's had a goal or an assist every sixty-four minutes. Oh, Eleven goals, five assists, which is insane. Mm. It's just so I, I can't believe how good he's been. It, it, it is incredible. Um, what, what he's been able to achieve. Um, so looking at this one, looking at the odds, obviously Liverpool are heavy favourites, um, and it's not worth going for anything there. The Asian handicap line is at two. Um, I think it's evens to back Liverpool uh, on the Asian handicap line at uh, minus two, and that's the bet I think I'm going to go for, purely because I think that, um, well, it's, I don't think Moyes is going to get anything from this game anyway, but I think Liverpool have just got too much for them. You can see it being 3 0, yeah? So 3 0, 4 1, something like that. I, ju- I just think it's going to be another. Well, and I-, I think Liverpool will go for uh, four goals or more in three consecutive games. Yeah, because they've had, they've had, they didn't play last weekend with the FA Cup. They're not in it. Um, and then, when is their second match against Seville? It's not for a while, is it? Not Seville, uh, Porto. Porto. Um, let me have a think. I, I, I think it, it isn't for another week or so. Yeah, yeah, it's a while away, isn't it? Yeah, so they'll be well rested and, and, and it should be up for this Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Um, oh, this is the thing, like, teams have been knocked out of the, uh, the FA Cup. They've, they've, got, they've got this, you know, uh, like, Liverpool haven't played for 10 days. Um, and then they've got uh, another week break until they play Newcastle. In fairness, West Ham also, you know, like, they, they haven't played for two weeks. Nice. Because they didn't play in the, uh, obviously they didn't, didn't play in Europe and they're out of the FA Cup. So, um, yeah. So, it's, uh, it's gonna, it'd be inter- actually, I wonder if it'll be interesting to see if there are any, um, if there's any, uh, fitness can, like, um, ring rustiness from either side. You know, you don't play for a couple of weeks. Momentum shift, momentum starts. Now for West Ham, they beat Watford, and that ended a, like a, a run of about four or five games, or four games where they uh, hadn't won. So, did that break momentum come at the wrong time for them? I don't know, but yeah, I'm definitely going for Liverpool to win this, and I think minus two. Yeah, let's go for it. All right, good man. Uh, over to you then, Johnny. 
uh, surprise, surprise, I'm going against them. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I just, uh, yeah, I'm looking at, obviously, the Liverpool are huge favorites to win and uh, there would be, nobody would, nobody would be surprised if they, if they do win this game. Uh, they got big motivation. I think they can temporarily get onto the second place in the, in the standings if they win. Uh, they will attack from the very first minute, uh, um, and their transition, their transition forward is the main thread, I would say. So they will play at very high pace. They have the quality, of course. They've got the motivation. They'll keep pressing and going for the goals, even if they get in front. So they will not sit back and wait. Um, they are well rested. Well, they, 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 they played, uh, against Porto, but not, not, not this week. So as Dan said, they've got a pretty, pretty, pretty good schedule, uh, for a side that can still achieve quite a lot, uh, this season. Uh, yeah, even with the history that West Ham have and Moyes ha- has, um, the odds, I, I don't think there is any value on uh, Liverpool to, to be, to be fair. Uh, I'm looking at how the odds moved. So yeah, the line was opened at uh, 1.5, moved to 2. Yeah, uh, everybody expecting Liverpool to to win this quite easily, and the stats uh, prove that uh, the public uh, seems to be seems to be right. I mean, Liverpool are undefeated in their last 15 home matches. Uh, they have scored at least two goals in their last 10 matches in the Premier League. So um, Liverpool are undefeated in 16 of the last 17 matches against West Ham. So this suggests all oh, that it should be very clear. Uh, uh, Liverpool win, but once again, let me remind all of the listeners that this is Premier League. You know, this is not this is the most competitive uh, league in the world, probably. Um, and I can see definitely a value on West Ham. We're going to put, but they have nothing to lose. You know, they they, they come to Anfield, show their best. If it turns out, uh, it can be a nice uh, uh, afternoon for them. If not, well, no big thing. So I'm looking at West Ham plus two on Asian handicap. Um, uh, for for this clash, yeah, didn't didn't uh, correct me if wrong. Didn't West Ham beat Liverpool three 0 Was it two seasons ago? Yeah, yeah. 2015 was it? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Let, let's let let's see how it goes. But uh, we we who gets it right if Dan or uh, Jolly? Ah <laughs> uh, yeah yeah yeah. I remember the match now. Because I'm just looking. Coutinho Coutinho was sent off. I think it's the only time he's ever been sent off. Mark Noble was sent off as well. Yeah yeah. yeah. All memories. Yeah, three 0 to live losing three 0 to West Ham. That's uh. Shocking. Uh, Martin's probably laughing as he's listening to this now on his holidays. Uh, let's move on then to uh, another Premier League match on Sunday. Uh, second place Man United are playing fourth place uh, Chelsea. But we'll go back to you, please, Dan. The intriguing one this one is because Man United have come in for a lot of stick recently uh, for um, seemingly the defensive way that they've played. And I think it's a little bit unfair. Um, yeah, you know, Jose Mourinho has parked the bus a little bit, but I don't think they're that bad. You know, just Second in the table, they're not doing too badly. I don't know if you saw them beat, um, you know, they drew with Sevilla. Yeah, uh, in the awful. I turned it off. Mm. Yeah, well, um, I don't know if you saw afterwards the interview, uh, BT Sport with Jose Mourinho, but, um, Des Scott asked him about, um, Scott McTominay, and Jose Mourinho said, let me give you a hug for not asking about <laughs> Paul Popper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He must have this, just, cause I, I was watching the Irish coverage and he must have been just asked, about Pogba by, um, oh, what was the Irish fellow who interviewed him? I don't remember. Uh, oh, I can never think of his name. It's Tony O'Donoghue. And, uh, <laughs> he just looked at him because he said, uh, uh, Jose Mourinho mentioned Paul Pogba. And O'Donoghue asked him, oh, well, has, has Paul done enough to stay in the team? And Mourinho gave him a death look and just said, who? <laughs> As if to be like, only I'm allowed to call him Paul. <laughs> and he says, Pogba. And then he just looked at him and he just said, he just kind of went, and walked off. <laughs> but I, I don't blame him for no. this because it, Mourinho has to live and die by these mistakes. You know, it was Scott McTominay's second Champions League game and he did all right. He did okay, you know. So, um, yeah, it's, I, I pulled the stats though because Man United's home is unbelievable. Um, like, I did not realise just how good their home form is. Do you know the last time they lost to any team so that isn't Manchester City in a competitive match at Old Trafford? Oh, this is a good one. Oh, pff, no idea. Well, man. yeah, it's, 
that's that's that's. I mean, I read the statistic that they're undefeated in 29 of their 30 last that's home matches. So that's that's probably that one. So, well, was, the, was, the, was the city only defeat, def, defeating them? Yeah, yeah. The, the the last time they lost to a team that wasn't Manchester City at Old Trafford was the 23rd of January 2016. Oh, 16. Wow. Who was that against? Uh, Southampton. They lost one 0 Nice. Mm. But but they um they've lost twice to Man City in that time. Man City are the only team at the moment that can beat them at Old Trafford, which is just insane. Mm. And you look at Chelsea and their away record. Um, okay, they stuffed uh, Brighton four 0 in uh, the Premier League back in uh, the twentieth of January, but lost to Watford four one, lost to Arsenal two one in the League Cup uh, semi, um, drew with Norwich, drew with Arsenal in the Premier League, drew with Everton. Lost to West Ham, drew with Liverpool. Their away record, I think, is what one, two home wins in, uh, sorry, two away wins in their last nine games in all competitions. You can understand why Conte's under pressure, can't you? Uh, but so, I, think, I think Dan, though, the, the Barcelona match would have done a lot to relieve that pressure, though. You think? Maybe, yeah. I, I saw Christensen saying, you know, he was a bit gutted by making a mistake that allowed Messi in. But it's, it's like Arsenal, you know, it's, um, and Spurs as well. Schizophrenic teams can only play well at home. Mm. You know, I, I'm kind of intrigued. And you look at the odds, Man United 2.27 to win. I'm all over it. Yeah. Honestly, all over it because Man United just, they keep winning at home. Um, the Asian handicap line of 0.25, uh, 1.95 that is. I'd, I'd be intrigued what, uh, how skinny it is if you went to minus 0.5. I would guess about 1.7, 1.65. And, you know, that sounds like a, that's not value, that's just a banker. Yeah. Because I cannot see Chelsea winning. But, yeah, I'm going to go for Man U at 2.27. Uh, do you think, Dan, that Conte is going to slap Jose at any moment? That's what I'm looking forward to. I hope <laughs> so. but, but Jose would not retaliate because Jose is uh, on track to be the best behaved man in the Premier League. <laughs> what are the odds for that? <laughs> I bet you Paddy Power have it. I bet you any, I, uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm going to bet on someone having a bet. <laughs> uh, Johnny, what do you think, man? Uh, surprise, I am on Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, plus 2.25 on Chelsea and uh, alternatively under 2.5 goes that's where it goes for me. Uh, the line was open at uh, 0.5 um, on Man United to 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 win. Move to 0.25. I guess that's how the market reacts after uh, yesterday's uh, Champions League uh, in Sevilla, where United were. Uh, let me find the correct word. They were not too convincing. They were. They, they played their usual usual Mourinho style tactics for a European Cup mm, tie. They were so. They're incredibly boring. Well, one can call it boring. One can call it tactically mature. One can call it uh, not very interesting. I, I don't know. For me, what I make of it, they played what they needed to play uh, away from home. And uh, given their great uh, home record, I, I, I cannot say I believe, but I guess they, they have the confidence to finish the uh, the round of 16 tie against Sevilla at home, but this is, let's speak about that later. Uh, they have a interesting game against Chelsea, so, uh, yeah, it's just two league wins for Chelsea in 2018, so they are not in their best form, but I, I still think the same can be said about Man United, who are just, uh, not, uh, at their best at the moment for, for me. Uh, it will depend a lot on how Jose Mourinho tackles this match. Uh, if uh, they will revert back to three-man defense or not. Uh, of course, they cannot count on under Herrera, who got suffered, uh, who got injured yesterday. Uh, with all the stats that uh, that say how many United are great at home and they're undefeated in so many matches, uh, I believe this will be a tactical battle and I don't think we will see too many goals uh, for Chelsea it's quite an important match uh, they played re- I, I say I would say they pre- played really well against Barcelona so they, they can take the momentum from that game if it wasn't for that uh, bad pass from who was it Christensen, Christensen yeah. yeah they would they would probably 
went on to win the game. Uh, I really liked how they played. They were brave. They were creative. They were they tackled the match from the from the right uh, right side. Uh, so if they can continue in that against, of course, Man United. Again, for me, it all depends how Mourinho will decide to to play. Of course, at home he will have to uh, get the, the the best of the team and play more offensively. But still, I don't think we will see too many goals. So. Under 2.5 goals and Chelsea plus 0.25 on handicap. I can see this as a nice draw, to be honest. Yeah, it's a funny thing though with with, with Man United, and that it's the way I see it. It's not like uh, what um, I, I'm stealing this argument from from the from the Irish coverage last night. Liam Brady was saying this, and and Damien Duff was saying it as well. It's that um, uh, with when when you won the Champions League with Porto and Inter, they were two teams who. Uh, Especially Inter, they are they don't mind playing defensive football to win. You know they're Italian, so they don't care as long as they win one nil, one nil, one nil. They don't mind how they win as long as they win. Porto was similar; they were just a, a team so uh, unified and and on such a great run that it was all about the result. It wasn't about how they played. However, uh, the argument from the Man United fans and from pundits is that Man United shouldn't be playing this type of football because uh, with the Inter Milan team Jose Mourinho had he had a couple of good players but no superstars with the Porto team he had he had he had average enough players but with the Man United squad he has now he had some of the best players in who were well they're supposed to be some of the best players in the world and um they want the fans want them to be playing attacking football you know and you know, part of me says, yeah, it's a results game. It's it's about winning, and uh, Marino did the right thing. They 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 didn't lose. They can come back to Old Trafford with home advantage, and they'll probably win. Uh, the one bad thing is it that that they didn't get an away goal that could could have really sealed it. But you know, are, are, what do you think, lads? Are Man United fans just too demanding? Like, should they just get behind the team and say, no, it doesn't matter. It's it's about winning, or you know, really? I mean, they're paying a lot of money to go see. Uh, their team, even even having a, a TV subscription is, is costly enough. You know, you got to have two channels in in the UK if you want to watch all Man United games. And uh, are are they right to be demanding better football? Um, do you, do you want the controversial answer? Go for it. No, <laughs> the, the man up. <laughs> man up. Speaking, speaking of someone who supports a football team that are absolutely diabolically crap, <laughs> no, they, they are overly overly demanding. <laughs> Winning is where, winning is all. Win, winning is all in the Premier League because the further up the table you get, the more money you get. The more, the more games you win the Champions League, the more money you get. It's not about how you win, it's about winning. And I'm sorry if, you know, people want the academy of football and all that sort of stuff, but welcome to the financial reality that, you know, we're in now. Sorry. It's fine, Dan. Mm. You don't have to apologise. <laughs> <laughs> What's your uh, take, uh, Johnny? It, it's it's a very tough one. I mean, I can imagine that uh, if they would play nice attacking football, but they would not be winning the games, they would be complaining again. So or still. So you know, you have you have you need to find a balance. Obviously, if, uh, with such a squad, uh, they they have quite rightly the expectations of playing nice and atta- a uh, better well better looking football, but. Uh, I mean, they were not complaining. When, well, some of them were uh, when uh, Jose Mourinho was taking the charge uh, because he was he was known for how he plays with uh, with his teams, and he was quite successful in what he was doing with the other teams. So I don't know. It's it's uh, in a way I can understand them, but in a way I I, I can't. Mm. So well, that's the thing. It's like you know you, you know you hired Jose Mourinho. Like surely you you've watched enough football over the last exactly. few years to know this was coming. Exactly. You cannot expect him to, to play all out attacking football, you know, like, uh, something like, uh, I don't know, Guard, uh, for sort of football that Guardiola, yeah. uh, forces City to play. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a different manager. He has his own style. Uh, he's proven, uh, to be uh, one of the most successful managers, uh, of the recent history in the last couple of years. So either you accept the fact that, uh, he has his own way of uh, making results or, well, you know. Yeah. 
support it's Swansea. Not, <laughs> <laughs> you know, go support St. Pauli or something, a team who have morals, yeah, if that's what you want. Thanks for listening to the Pro Tipster Football Show. Check out ProTipster.com where you can earn money by sharing your tips and coupons. Sign up now and get our free daily newsletter where our experts share their tips. Go to ProTipster.com for more details. And Arsenal are taking on Manchester City in the League Cup final, the Carabao Cup. How do you see this one going, Johnny? Obviously, City are the big favourites to win. Uh, and uh, as I looked at the line, it's currently minus one Asian handicap on City to win, moved from 0.75. Uh, and the over, under, over the line is to, it uh, moved from 2.75 to 3, which indicates goals. Um, and you, you know, guys, I like to go against the market, and because this is a final, it's a one match. So, I would be looking for Arsenal plus one on Asian handicap. Uh, obviously, already all the arguments say that it should be a win for City. They will, be definitely extra motivated after their FA Cup exit and defeat to Wigan. But in a way, I can see that Wigan actually showed probably Arsenal and others how teams can be at least competitive against, uh, competitive, sorry, against uh, City if not uh, making the results. Competitive. Uh, I like that. That's a new word. Sorry. Compet- no, it's fine. You're like James Joyce, man. You know, like if, 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 if you get a new word published three times, they have to put it in the dictionary. So I'm going to start using this. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it, de- it depends how, if, if Arsenal can do something like vegan, because if they play, uh, open game with City, I don't think they have uh, too much, uh, they have, uh, they can succeed. So that's my, that's my point. Uh, I, I know Henry Mkhitaryan is tied, to, uh, cup tied for the Carabao Cup final. So they will probably rely mostly on Pierre, um, for, for, on Aubameyang. Uh, if they sit, sit back and play for counter attacks, well, they've got players, to, uh, like Aubameyang who can play, who is fast, uh, to, you know, make one, two successful counter attacks. So yeah. Uh, city favourites, but going against the market as usual. Arsenal <laughs> <Right>. plus one. <laughs> Good man. Pro tips are done. Okay, so I wrote a preview about this uh, for the Pro Tips website, so check that out. Pro tips are calm slash betting dash news. Um, it's it's um, Arsenal come into the game like they they play tonight against uh, FK Ostersons at the Emirates. But because they won 3-0 away in Sweden, I think they're going to rotate the squad. And I think it's going to work in their favour as well. Because Mkhitaryan can't play against um, Man City. He'll play tonight. And Danny Welbeck will play tonight because Aubameyang can't play tonight and he'll play on Sunday. Um, so you've got Mesut Ozil, Aaron Ramsey are supposed to be both out tonight. But I think at least one of them will be back for Sunday. Maybe both. And the, the, the interesting... The interesting thing for me is uh, whether Espina keeps his place because Chet's been poor of late, and I know he's going to play tonight. But will they will they leave him in for the Carabao Cup final? I think Wenger said it the other day, man. I think he did say Ospina is going to play in the League Cup final. Well, <laughs> I, w- I wouldn't be surprised at all. I, I would have thought that's what he would have done. And well, Man City, so they go into the game without Fabian Delft because he got sent off. Um, so I think they'll move Danilo to left back and Carl Walker will play it right back. But Walker was no great shakes against, uh, Wigan. And, you know, will, will they even think about playing, um, Danilo right back and Zinchenko left back? I don't know. It's also like Bravo. Will it, Bra- Claudio Bravo has been the, um, the keeper for Man City in the Cups, but he was poor into Wigan too. And, you know, why not play Edison? Um, statistically, so I looked at the stats for this one. Um, goals. Um, I think you have to go to 3.5 goals to get just over evens. And in the last five finals, that bet would have won three times. In the last five finals, over 4.5 goals would have won twice. So it's, there's normally goals in these, in these games, normally quite open. Um, I think it's because they, it's a one, it's, it's like Johnny said, it's, it's a one-off game. 
You know, it's, it, I, I think there's pressure on, on Wenger to win it because, you know, Arsenal fans are, like Man U fans, a bit, a bit entitled and demanding. And they don't just have to pay for a TV channel if they run one. <laughs> 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 but, you know, uh, one thing I don't get, and I'm hoping Johnny could explain this, because I, I, I'm, I, I think I'm a, being a bit dense here. But um, so I looked at the odds, and it said um, odds against there being extra time, yes, three point nine five. But you can get the draw at four point three seven. Surely the odds against there being extra time should be the same as the odds against the draw. Mm. Yeah, uh, I mean. Am I missing something here, or has someone made a boo boo? I don't. I don't think you're missing anything. I mean, for odds for extra time, yeah, <laughs> yes, are lower than the draw. That's what you mean. Do I yeah, get it right? but surely that's not right. Well, then, then you would take the draw. Yeah. So yeah, there, there's one. Um, that being said, um, extra times only happened seven times in the last twenty years, and only four in the last twenty years have gone to penalties. Um, one of those being the 2001 F, uh, League Cup final, where Bowling City lost on penalties to uh, Liverpool. Thank you very much, David Ellery. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that game, Paddy, but um, we got one penalty uh, to make it 1-1. We should have had a second and yeah. Ellery it. I remember, yeah, you should have, yeah. God, mm. oh, he was an awful ref, wasn't he? <laughs> yeah. It was a happy right. day for everyone to watch his English football when he when he finally quit. <laughs> Um, I, I'm not actually putting a bet on this one yet. I want to see what happens tonight between Arsenal and Arsenal. So I want to see if Arsenal pick up any injuries or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to watch how the lines move. I'm inclined. Um, I'm inclined to go for goals. Um, but I want to see, just see if anything drastically changes after tonight. So yeah. Um, but goals, over three and a half goals looks an interesting bet for me. Magic. All right, let's move on then. We're off to uh, we're off to the Bundesliga then for a Sunday match. Fourth place Bayer Leverkusen are taking on sixth placed Schalke. I did write something here. Ah, yeah, I wrote Schalke are slipping down the table like a cheap stripper on a Monday noon shift with the grace and guile of what would be befitting such a lady at such a time in the afternoon. Dan. Wow. How am I supposed to compete with that kind of poetry? <laughs> Honestly. I'm going to pack up and go home. Except I already am at home uh, for reasons I want to go into, blah, blah, blah. Um, my knowledge of the Bundesliga is not so great, so I'm kind of relying on statistics here. I'll be honest with you. Um, so I'm going to go with what Pat, you know, what Paddy's written about Schalke not playing that well and things like that. Um, I did write a piece recently about Schalke's striker Bruno Bolo, and I was really pleased because next game he scored against Hoffenheim, so evidently I, I'd done something right. <laughs> um, Schalke are really poor away from home. Uh, one win in the last six away. Um, they lost to... Oh, OK, losing to Bayern isn't really that bad. Uh, but they lost to Leip- uh, to uh, Rassen Ball Sport Leipzig. Love getting that in. Red Bull. Drew with um, Eintracht Frankfurt. Uh, Drury, Borussia, Munch and Gladbach. And their, their overall form, it's not great, is it? And you look at, but, but by Leverkusen, don't see many great shakes either. Lost to Hertha at home. Again, lost to Bayern. Boring. Um, they beat, <laughs> sorry, I, I honestly, I, I'd love to know German fans. Please get in touch with us. Are German fans as bored of Bayern Munich as we are? <laughs> You know, do you hope for a European league where Bayern Munich bugger off and the rest of you can play the Bundesliga with fun? <laughs> I'm, I'm curious. I, I really am. Um, yeah, so Bayern did beat Werder and mine's at home in the Bundesliga. Um, I wouldn't know how to call this one. I mean, Bayer Leverkusen are favourites at 1.89. Asian handicap. Um, Schalke evens do not lose. I don't think I could go with that. Um, I'm going to pass, I think. I'm going to pass. I, I can't see anything that stands out, to be honest with you, on this one. Um, my knowledge of Bundesliga is not as great as it should be. Um, just to give both teams to score 1.63. And it's not really value, but I think that will happen. Um, last five Bundesliga games, it's happened for Schalke. Ah, but, but maybe not for Bayer. Bayer have kept two clean sheets and failed to score once, so... Mm. 
yeah, really tough one to call. Tough one, so. isn't it? Thanks for picking That's... this, Johnny. <laughs> um, yeah, it's Johnny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, actually, it's a good argument. It's it's a very difficult one to predict. Uh, that's why I, I picked it. You know, it's, it's it's the one I wanted to hear o- opinions all over. Uh, Schalke dropping points. Yeah, like Paddy said, they are not uh, doing well, uh, especially uh, after the in in 2018. They won last week against Hoffenheim. And I think we had this game last week in the podcast. You know, we Schalke against Hoffenheim. Mm-hmm. And we predicted, I think, over 2.5 goals, and it ended uh, 2-1 for Schalke. So, yeah. Another win for the protester boys. Uh, I look at the odds movement, and uh, it's no surprise that we don't know what to make of this game, because even the, probably the public don't know what to make of this game, because the odds haven't moved much. So, <laughs> uh, Leverkusen are the favourites, and I can see why uh, Schalke have been recently very poor away. Uh, but uh, I I can see Leverkusen being quite unpredictable uh, still. It's a crucial game uh, for both teams because it's uh, they both fight for the Champions League spots. Um, the stats say that there have been over 2.5 goals in Schalke's last three games in Bundesliga. Yes, uh, but uh, with the important how how important this game is and how. Their form is uh, not uh, great. I think they will tackle this uh, more. Or, uh, their approach will be more cautious. Uh, Leverkusen seem to be uh, quite uh, confident going into this game. Uh, they believe in, from what I read, that they, they can win this and they can grab the momentum. But they have tough matches ahead of them. They, they go, they have a trip to Wolfsburg, then they played uh, Mönchengladbach at home and Cologne away. Both Wolfsburg and Cologne are fighting for relegation, so it will be tough, very tough matches. Uh, of course, uh, local rivals Mönchengladbach, Gladbach, that's uh, that's that's always a, a big fight. I so you it's quite it properly. Borussia Mönchengladbach. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, talk to me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> so. <That was> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, Let's leave this one with uh, the best advice for this game is no bet. No bet. Good stuff. Sometimes no bet is better than just to have a exactly. bet. Exactly. You know? Save your money. You're not losing nothing then, you know? No, no. It's good, it's good, it's good advice, you know, to talk, about, yeah, to talk about games that are evenly matched and, uh, yeah, to show uh, people, you know, what, or to tell people what we're thinking. And, um, yeah, there's no point in throwing, throwing away your money when you're not sure. You know, even though something might look like a nice price, when you dig deeper into the stats, then you're just like, nah, nah, I'm better off avoiding it and either finding <laughs> something else or wait until wait until another match. <laughs> Joining me now, then we have our weekly La Liga section. We have our La Liga Spanish expert, Pro Tipster David. Hello. Hi, hi, buddy. How are you? Yeah, I'm very good, mate. How are you? Fine, thank you. I'm fine. So, uh, did you fall asleep watching Sevilla uh, take on Manchester United? Uh- was terrible. Yeah. Only that uh, David De Gea save. He was crazy. But the rest of the game, I mean, I knew that. I knew that. I know how Mourinho is acting, and I know that he wants to to do this. You know, yeah. the first game away, try to keep a nil nil, and later in Ultra Four, try to score what's, one goal. Yeah. What's What's the reaction in the Spanish media though? Because the the British and and the Irish media, they're they're kind of saying, look. This is Mourinho, this is, well, okay, half of the media are saying, look, this is Mourinho, this is how he plays, what did you expect? But the other half of the media is saying, they're going crazy saying, you know, you have, they have, this squad has some of the best players in the world, and then they play this type of awful football. But in Spain, uh, particularly, I suppose, in Seville, do they see this as a missed, uh, a missed chance? Yeah, for Sevilla, it was, yeah, it was like that. Because, uh, I, I mean, I watched the game and people, people are thinking the same that they miss a, a good opportunity to, to beat uh, Manchester United. That Mourinho, we know Mourinho in Spain. We know how, how he's doing. He, <laughs> he was doing the same with Real Madrid, you yeah, know, yeah. and top players are playing in court attack. But, okay, this is football. He hit a style and, for the moment, it's good. You, you, you see, nil nil and now they have, they have the good chance to, to go to quarter final. So, mm. Okay, uh, right. So look, what 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 matches do we have this weekend that are of interest? We we did speak about um, 
No, wait, how will I edit this? Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll put you in before. So we are going to speak about uh, Sevilla versus Atletico Madrid with uh, pro tipster Johnny uh, in a while. Uh, what games have you been looking at for this weekend? Uh, for me, the, to be honest, this is the most interesting game on the on the weekend because Barcelona play at, at home against uh, Girona and Real Madrid play at home against Alaves. So, to be honest, this is not uh, two oh, interesting yeah. games. <laughs> and the more interesting is Sevilla against Atletico. And I was checking that game, and well, you 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 know, after Sevilla is coming after this tough game against uh, Manchester and Atletico plays today. At home in Madrid against Copenhagen, they already won uh, one four in Dynamo. So probably today they are going to play with the, let's say like the not uh, more often players, so like the second team, let's say. So I'm checking, and for me the most interesting, but I mean you can try Atletico to win, but uh, I'm not sure about that. It's too risky. So I see come interesting under two and a half goals. The the odd is one point seventy. So. It can be interesting. Atletico de Madrid is really strong in defense. And in the last, in the last nine games, over ten, it was under two and a half goals in La Liga. And you saw yesterday, Sevilla, that they have problems to, to score goals this season. Muriel, a good striker, but he missing quite a lot. And Ben Jeder, a good striker, but he not playing too much with, uh, with Montella. So for me, it is under two and a half, quite interesting, you know what I think about that game because uh, one x2 I'm not sure you know it's hard hard mm-hmm. to predict that Atletico can win but you know they play in Sevilla and this is always uh, with, difficult uh, with, with Sevilla now uh, David because probably their their best chance of getting Champions League next season is they 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 need to win it really don't they? They, they it doesn't look like they're going to finish top four in La Liga yeah, top four is it, it gonna be hard for them because I think Real Madrid already third after yesterday they won uh, Leganes. Mm. So now they have Sevilla have 39 points, they are fifth, and uh, Valencia is fourth with uh, 46. So they are not going to to mm. reach probably the the they Champions can. League yeah. like that. So mm, probably <laughs> hard, but I, I I'm not sure if they can win because you know after this tough game yesterday, probably they are going to make rotation as well. And uh, I don't know if they are going to play with the with the with the lineup that they they used yesterday. So this under two and a half can be interesting, you know, because one x two it, it would be hard to to predict. So this under two and a half is interesting for me. Okay. And I I have another game for yeah. tomorrow. Like uh, tomorrow is Deportivo against Espanol, and this is a bit risky. I I mean I was checking and it's a bit risky, but I I think I, I'm gonna go for for Deportivo to win. The odd is, uh, let me check, 2.48. I mean, it's hard because they are not winning. They, they, are, they just won one of the last six games in La Liga. And they could not score in the last three games either. But come on, it's going to happen sooner than later. They need to win again. If they want to, to get uh, uh, out of relegation, they need to win. And I think tomorrow is a good chance. They play at home. Espanol is uh, without winning in the last seven games. And they draw the last three games. Um, for me, I mean, this is too risky, too, too, too risky, 2.48, but the Portugal to win tomorrow. They need to win, and it's going to happen this sooner than later, it's going to happen. <laughs> okay, Magic, uh, thank you very much for tips to David, and we'll speak to you again next week. Yeah, for sure. Thanks to you. See you. As you probably know, podcasts still grow by word of mouth. Show your support for the Pro Tipster Football Show by telling your football mad friends all about our podcast. Or by leaving a nice review for us on iTunes. Uh, let's go off to uh, Spain then. Uh, La Liga, we have fifth place Seville. They're taking on second place Atletico. So, of course, Seville were in action against Manchester United. We mostly all fell asleep to that. Uh, what stats do we have here? Oh, I found some stats. There have been under 2.5 goals in 13 out of 20 Seville home matches, which is surprising because everyone thinks they're such an attacking team. And there have been under... 1.5 goals in 10 out of 20 Atletico Madrid away matches. Let's stick with you on this, please, Johnny. Um, it's quite a, quite an interesting game. It's the big game in Spain this uh, weekend. It's uh, Sunday, 2045 Central Europe time. So it's, it's the big Sunday game. Um, I am, I was, uh, it's another tough one to, it's a tough one to predict. Uh, I was quite impressed by Sevilla playing against Man United uh, yesterday, and they, they had a nice game plan. It w- worked uh, pretty well. They didn't have so many 
quality chances, but uh, they they tried at least uh, compared to United. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, however, they play probably the most informed team in uh, in Spain, Atletico Madrid, who need points if they want to at least scare Barcelona a bit. So. Sevilla are chasing a European qualification place. Atletico, big motivation to put the pressure on Barcelona. It makes a quite intense game. Uh, the defense of Atletico is quite impressive this, uh, this season. They only allowed nine goals in the league. Best defensive record. Uh, I just wonder how Sevilla will uh, line up because uh, during, in the, in the Man United game, they're one of their best, if, uh, if I'm not mistaken, even the best goal scorer, Benny Adair, was left on the bench. So uh, I don't know if he's injured. There were no reports of him being injured before the game, but he was left on the bench. He was he didn't even come on the pitch as a sub, so I'm not sure if uh, it was a tactical decision by Vincenzo Montella or um, he had some luck. Uh, Atletico will play Copenhagen today in the Europa League, but they won the first leg 4-1 in Denmark, so... Uh, there is heavy rotation expected uh, to this to the squad. Uh, Griezmann and Costa are supposed to be rested. Felipe Luis is uh, expected to be rested as well. So they they should be quite uh, quite fit uh, for for this match. But uh, some impressive stats of Sevilla as well. Sevilla are undefeated in 23 of their 24 home matches in La Liga. Quite impressive. They have been under 2.5 goals scored in nine out of Atletico's last 10 La Liga games. So th- this shows the trend that, uh, and the way, uh, Diego Simeone and Atletico are approaching the games and especially away from home when they first try not to concede and they, they, they don't score too many, too many goals. Atletico have kept clean sheet in seven of their last Eight away matches in La Liga. Away matches. That's quite impressive as well. I'm looking at uh, the the first bet would be under 2.5 goals. The odds are not super great. If they're about 1.75 or something like that. But uh, that's what I can see. Either a narrow win for Atletico or a draw. Yeah, so under 2.5 goals. Very good. Okay, over to you then, Dan. Well, what, what do we know about me in La Liga, Paddy? <laughs> you love it. <laughs> no, I love it as much as Aston Villa. <laughs> yeah, that, that's more like it. Um, <laughs> what I know about La Liga is not great because I'm not a fan. So please take that into account before I, you know, talk about what I would tip in this game. Um, again, running just by stats, La Liga is, their home record's insane. Mm. It's great. Um, I know they lost to Betis, obviously City rivals 5-3, and I remember that being a bit of a shocking result. But before that, their last home defeat was in La Liga was November 2016 against Barcelona, which is, what, 19, 20, 22 games prior. So that's uh, some home record there. But they play an Atletico side who I think would be fantastic this season. Um You know, comfortably second in La Liga uh, behind another team that I just love. Barcelona. Um, yeah, if you didn't see the sarcasm in that. <laughs> um, and I was looking at Atletico's away record, and it's insane. Yeah, they lost Espanyol, but before that, their last uh, defeat away in La Liga was the 12th of December 2016 to Villarreal. So you've got two teams with fantastic records. Um, head-to-head... Uh, has head favours Atletico and Atletico are favourites in this one. I can't, I do fancy Atletico to win, but I've got to be honest with you. I'd look at uh, Johnny's way of betting on this and I'd always look to go against the market because of Sevilla's great home record. And Sevilla plus 0.5, I reckon would be about 1.7, 1.65-ish. Mm-hmm. Isn't, isn't value, isn't a lot of value, but I think it's one that will win. Because I think Sevilla are good enough to hold Atletico to a draw at home, but I'm not brave enough to go for the 3.26 odds that they will do so. Um, so yeah, I'm going to break my bet. I'm going to break it down to two 
if you're not brave, go for uh, Sevilla plus half a goal. But if you are brave, the draw, 3.26. Okay, good man. Let's move on to Italy then. Third place, Roma are taking on seventh placed AC Milan. Uh, I found some stats here you might like. Roma have conceded first in seven out of nine home matches against top half teams and there have been over two and a half goals in 10 out of 14 AC Milan uh, away matches. So Dan has uh, Dan's gone back to work, lads. Uh, Johnny? Yeah, probably the highlight of the Serie A weekend uh, for me, Roma against Milan. Uh, Milan is the informed team in uh, in Serie A. Ah, they have uh, their um, they have not lost a match uh, in the last 10 games in all competitions. They have yet to play today's Europa League uh, encounter against uh, the Bulgarian Ludo Goretz. However, they won the first leg like, 3-0. So again, uh, like uh, we, we spoke about uh, in the Atletico game, they will, they're expected to, to ra- rotate the team and, uh, and, and keep uh, the most important players uh, fresh for the game in Rome on Sunday. So Gattuso will not risk the key players like Bonucci, Bilia, Bonaventura and Suzo. Uh, so others uh, should start today because they have to, uh, yeah, they, pro- they, they are already mostly through. I don't expect the Bulgarian Ludogorets to score three goals to make it even into the extra time today. Uh, Roma, we have seen this, uh, Roma, Yesterday in the Champions League, if you remember our dear listeners uh, and listen to our Champions League podcast, I said that the Shakhtar Roma game uh, will will definitely be more interesting than Sevilla and Manchester United. Fadi, did I say that? Oh, you I sure did. did. And it was much more entertaining, I have to say. Uh, especially the second half was plenty of full of chances, especially from home side from Shakhtar. But Roma also played uh, pretty well. Uh, Roma coach was, as I listened to some reactions after yesterday's games, he was pretty angry for about the second half because he said that the players did not respect the tactical uh, guidelines uh, from him. They didn't didn't tackle the game from from the side that he wanted. Uh, the key man for Roma in the last couple of weeks is Cengiz Under, who has scored four goals in his last three appearances for Roma. He also scored uh, yesterday against Shakhtar. Um, he's the key man. Uh, the issue yesterday was uh, that uh, the coach fielded uh, Florenzi, who was not fully fit. And that was a big topic, in, uh, as I understood, in Italy, because he was not fully fit and uh, he was, well, he was involved in, in one of the goals. He was recovering from uh, an illness as I understood but he was not fully fully recovered uh, I think Romer's t- title challenges comp- uh, talking about the league uh, are over after their winless January they can concentrate on uh, fighting for the third place I would say I uh, don't think they have any chances of uh, catching Juve or Napoli some interesting stats. AC Milan have won five of their last six matches in Serie A. Roma have, have won their last three matches. So quite good stats for both teams in their in the recent uh, league form. Uh, the odds movement. They moved. The line was uh, minus uh, 0.75 or 0.75 for Roma. Moved to 0.5 only. So some... Yeah, I would say it was influenced by the yesterday's result in uh, in the Champions League, and the the total goals line moved from 2.75 to 2.5. So uh, market uh, tends to believe that there will not be as many goals as uh, thought in the in the first place. Uh, I have not made my decision yet on this one, but what I fancy for now is under 2.75. That's that's a value. I don't expect uh, too many goals in this game. And our final match then uh, from the football before we move on to uh, our other sports. Uh, first place PSG are take, taking on third place uh, Marseille. So Johnny, this is yours again. Yeah, Par- Paris Saint Germain. They are um, they returned to winning ways after losing to Real Madrid. They beat Strasbourg five two. Uh, they have. 
perfect at home form. They won last uh, 13 home matches in the league. Um, there have been two over 2.5 goals scored in 16 of PSG's last ni- 19 games in League One. Uh, of course, they're the big favorites uh, to win. Uh, and uh, but the web value is on Marseille. Let me explain why. Last season uh, there was a nil-nil draw in Paris uh, with Marseille. This season, the first head-to-head match ended up two two all in Marseille. Marseille fight with Monaco for the second place. Uh, second place is important in France because it guarantees the main uh, the group stage of the Champions League, while the third place only guarantees, I think, the playoffs. Uh, the first match in Marseille was interesting because Edison Cavani he scored a last minute equalizer uh, to, to, for PSG to grab an important point. Uh, I would say at this stage of the of the season, for PSG is important to win this game. Not even so because for for the points in the league, but for the confidence ahead of the Champions League. Although we know that the Champions League match against uh, Real Madrid is not next week, but still, it's for them to keep the momentum. And to keep the winning way until the match against Real Madrid, so they are full of confidence. So the odds moved from uh, from the opening line of 1.5 to 1.75. So uh, it is expected that Paris Saint Germain will win this uh, with difference of at least two or more goals. Also, the line, the dot goals line moved from 3.25 to 3.5. So a lot of goals expected. But as you know, I like the value of Marseille plus 1.75. That's just a huge. Handicap to cover uh, when it's a third, uh, first against the third uh, in the league. And the, the odds are above even, 2.06. And yeah, and maybe under 3.5 goal, uh, goals for around 2.0, but then are you brave enough for it when it comes to PSG? So that's the question. If you have any betting questions you'd like to ask, don't be shy. Get in touch with Patty, Martin, or Dan on Twitter. ProTipster IRL, ProTipster EN, or ProTipster DAN, or on Facebook at ProTipster UK. So uh, joining me now for our tennis uh, segment, we have uh, ProTipster Johnny again, and he has a couple of uh, ATP uh, games that uh, he likes the look of. The uh, first one is, uh, I hope I say his name properly, oh, Aljaz, Aljaz Bedin versus Pablo uh, Carino Busta. So how, how do you see this one going, uh, Johnny? That's a, it's an ATP match played in Rio de Janeiro uh, on clay. Um, Car- Pablo Carino Busta is last year's runner-up. Uh, he lost in uh, the final of this tournament in Rio against Dominic Thiem, who is a defending champion and who is the biggest favorite to win the title in Rio de Janeiro this time around again. Uh, Beden uh, is a Slovenian uh, tennis player. Surprisingly, he, he is number 43 in the world. Pablo Carreno Busta is number 11. He was in the top 10, but dropped out of it. Surprisingly, uh, Alej Beden, he leads the head-to-head uh, 2-1. All of these matches, uh, as far as I remember, were played on clay. Just, just by look at the head-to-head uh, in tennis, you know, you cannot really ignore the head-to-head. Of course, if it's 2-1, head-to-head is 2-1, that uh, doesn't make too much difference. But uh, if you know, for example, if you see a player winning the head-to-head 7-0, then you know that uh, probably the other player doesn't like his style and doesn't suit him. Uh, the Slovenian Bedene had a very bad run. One, one win, three defeats before his run here in before his run in Buenos Aires. That was a tournament we talked about last week in our tennis podcast. Uh, it was another clay tournament before tournament in Rio de Janeiro that uh, Dominic Thiem won and Bedene was the finalist there who he lost the, the final uh, against uh, Dominic Thiem uh, Carreno Busta is obviously the better player of these two uh, however Bedene found his form his serving is uh, very well at the moment he's probably in form is of his life on clay he's a good clay quarter uh, whilst uh, uh, okay, if, when we speak about Spaniards and S- Spain tennis players, uh, so, pa- so Pablo Carreno Busta is a Spaniard. Uh, you expect him to be a great uh, clay court player like Rafael Nadal, David Ferrer, uh, and so David Ferrero in, in the past and some others. Uh, Nicolas Almagro. But actually, Pablo Carreno Busta 
he is quite good at the hard words and uh, he quite likes them. Uh, he, I, I, I cannot say he's bad on clay, but it's not his most uh, favorite uh, surface. He's more of a hardcore player. He doesn't slide that well on clay. Uh, he has a bit of problems with his shots on, on clay at times, especially topspin and forehand. So the odds are 1.82 for Bedana to win, 1.93 for Karina Busta. So you, you can... I would say it's a it's a difficult one to look at from the betting perspective, but I would give edge to the in, in I would rate these players in current form of Bedene and how better player Corena Busta is. They're both pretty young, by the way. Bedene is 28, Corena Busta is 26. Uh, Bedene in form of his life, probably Corena Busta, uh, <clears throat> the better player o- overall. I would go with the higher odds and 1.93 for Karina Busta. Despite all said, all said, uh, here's this 2017, for example, US Open semi-finalists. He played two matches at the World Tour Finals in London as a substitute to Rafael Nadal. He's got the more experience and Bedani had a long run in Buenos Aires, uh, last week. So he's going to be a bit, a bit tired and Pablo Karina Busta has the qualities to, to, to give, uh, to force him into into his errors. But of course it depends if his, if Bedani's surf will work or not. So my recommendation for this one is, uh, Pablo Carrena Busta at one, 1.93. All right. And the other one then was, uh, Francis Tiafo and Juan Martin Del Potro. Yeah. The other match is, uh, ATP in, uh, USA and Delray Beach, um, world number 91 against world number 10. Uh, Francis Tiafo, uh, got a wild card for this tournament while Juan Martin Del Potro is in second seed. Head to head, uh, reads, uh, 2-0 for Del Potro. Um, Del Potro won, uh, their la- last year's match in Acapulco and, uh, they played in last month's Austria, uh, sorry, yeah, last month it is or already, uh, Australian Open, uh, when he won, uh, 3, 3 nil. Del Potro is now 6-2 in 2018. He beat, uh, earlier here in, uh, uh, Delray Beach, uh, Jeremy Chardy on Tuesday, 6264. Uh, Tiafue, Francis Tiafue had a good run last week in, uh, ATP tournament in New York, which we talked about in our tennis podcast as well. And he made the quarterfinals before, uh, he was beat, where he was beaten by the later champion of the tournament, Gavin Anderson. So definitely, a run that, uh, a good run for, for a player that is not, uh, regularly featuring in the later stages of the, of, the, of these tournaments. Um, uh, it will be another huge hitting affair, uh, featuring two of the biggest, uh, forehands, I would say, in the game. But I don't, I don't think uh, nothing suggests that, uh, Francis Tiaf uh, should suddenly turn his, uh, turn, turn the side. Against his idol, because uh, as I read, uh, he said uh, that uh, Juan Martin Del Potro is one of his one of his idols. So for this one, I picked the favorite to win uh, with a set handicap of 1.5. So he needs to win two, basically uh, by two sets, and 1.76 odds for Del Potro to win by two sets. Right then, so it's just me then for some NBA talk. I'm gonna be fronting this bit on my own because uh, I used to do some NBA tips over on our Facebook page but we're, we're going to keep them here from now on. I might drop in the odd time on our Facebook group but we'll see how that goes in the future. Anyway look, uh, the NBA returns tonight uh, the 23rd um, the f- it's the first match after the All-Stars break. I can't really say that I'm a huge fan of these All-Star games, never have been um, just I prefer my, my sports teams to be proper rivals and just hate each other with a passion and kind of not want to play with each other. A bit like, you know, could you imagine if there was an all-star team back in the day when Roy Keane and Patrick Vieira were captaining Man United and Arsenal? They'd have just hated each other. You know, they wouldn't have played with each other. They'd have <laughs> been doing sliding tackles into each other. So, yeah, I I, uh, I think it's all too nicey-nicey and I would prefer a bit more rivalry. But, you know, it's a moneymaker and that's what it's all about. Of course, look, there's been... um. A couple of high-profile player trades, transfers during the break, uh, but you'll already know plenty about that, so there's not really much point in me speaking about them and giving my opinion either. Uh, There's a couple of big games, though, happening over the next couple of days. The Cleveland Cavaliers 
are taking on the Washington Wizards, the Golden State Warriors uh, will be entertaining the LA Clippers, and the Detroit Pistons are taking on the Boston Celtics on Friday night slash Saturday morning. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I'll have a look through uh, these ones. So the Cavaliers, let me give you the odds. The Cavaliers are 1.45 to win, the Wizards 2.79. The handicap is um, minus 5.5, so Cavaliers minus 5.5, 1.91. The Wizards uh, plus 5.5, 1.92. The overline is quite high, it's 2. The overline is achievable, it's uh, 220, so 1.91 to the over and 1.95 to the over. So look, the Cavs, they've won 34 out of 56 games overall, and they've won 20 out of 27 at home. So it's a great record, and they've covered. So it's a great record, but they've only covered the Asian handicap spread in only six out of those twenty-seven games at home, and at home they've gone uh, over uh, the set line in only thirteen out of twenty-seven. The Wizards have won thirty-three games out of fifty-seven, now, so it's not great. Uh, Sixteen out of thirty, though, on the road, so they're a little bit better playing away from the capital they've covered the spread in 17 out of 30 away from home and they've gone over the line in only 12 out of 30 when playing away from the capital and you know with those stats you'd be tempted to go with under 220 and given the handicap to the wizards especially knowing that the calves not as good as they are um you know they're winning a lot. They've they've, they've won twenty out of twenty seven at home, but they're, they're, they've only covered the spread in six out of twenty seven. This is a problem in in basketball. It's also a problem with the other game I want to talk about. Um, when a team is so good at home, the line is just set wildly high, and it's very hard to beat them. So you're often better times better going with the underdog here. So uh, yeah, I would be tempted to go with under based on those stats. Um, there's there's still plenty of time before uh, there's still plenty of time before uh, this game uh, starts, so I will have a look at it again. Uh, I'm not saying it's a tip, but it's I'd probably go with it. Put it that way. Uh, it'll probably be the same for the next game for the next match. Uh, Golden State Warriors and the LA Clippers. So the odds are ridiculously low. 1.14 for the Warriors and 6.06 for a Clippers win, which isn't going to happen. The Asian handicap is minus 10.5 points. So Golden State Warriors would be starting with a minus 10.5 points disadvantage there, 1.9 to beat that. Or you could give those 10.5 points to the Clippers and they are 1.93. The line then is pretty big as well, 232.5 points. Over that is 1.91, under that 1.92. So let me give you the stats. The Warriors have won 44 out of 58 overall they're just brilliant they're great to watch um and they're not like you know it's not like those dominant Bayern Munich or, or Barcelona teams but back in the day who were kind of mechanical and boring in how they how they win uh, these are quite they're really exciting to watch so yeah, they're great and they've won they've won 22 out of 29 at home they've covered the spread though in only 13 out of those 29 games at home like i said when the when a team is so dominant uh, the lines are usually massive and like here ten and a half points i don't care how good you are that's that's a tough line to beat you know um they've gone over over the line in only 15 out of 28 games and it's the same reason those huge lines they're just hard to cover the clippers they've only won the clippers they've won 30 out of 56 in all so not bad and half of their games on the road so 14 out of 28 uh, on the road, they've beaten the spread in 17 out of 28, so not too bad, especially playing on the road. And they've gone over the line in 13 out of 28 away from Los Angeles. Based on those stats, you know, you'd be, again, you'd be looking at unders, I think. And given the advantage to the Clippers, it's a tough choice, though. You know, it's the first match back after the All Star break. Everyone's well rested, and they're, they're gearing up now towards the playoffs, um, which will be soon april isn't it and um yeah 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 it's, it's gonna be an interesting interesting one to watch uh normally uh, in a handicap like that i i would be going with the clippers um i'm gonna read up some more on it though um closer to game time as they would call it so uh yeah i would reckon uh clippers on the handicap here uh, but i'm gonna hold off 
until closer to kickoff. Uh, the third game I'm going to be keeping an eye on is the Detroit Pistons, who will be entertaining the Boston Celtics, and that's on Friday night, Saturday morning. The odds, only the the team odds are out now because it's with basketball. It's just it's too early at the time of recording, so the odds are the Pistons, one point seven seven, and the Celtics one point nine two. I'd be I'd be tempted by Celtics here because uh, it, they had a bit of a wobble there uh, towards the the break, and the break came at the perfect time for them. Because yeah, they had that wobble, and uh, so hopefully they'll regroup, they'll be rejuvenated and and, and ready to uh, push for the for the playoffs now again. And the Pistons, you know, they're, they're certainly not a bad team, but they've been patchy on the road. Uh, they've been quite good at home, so it's it's a tough one to call. Uh, I I would kind of lean towards the Celtics, but um, yeah, and 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 it's because they had they've had that break to uh, regroup and, and, and rethink uh, because they had started the season really, really brilliantly, a lot better than anyone had thought they ever would. And, yeah, they, they were starting to slide then towards towards the break. Uh, so thankfully, thankfully that came uh, and they'll be able to get their heads together and, yeah, I'd say they'll win this. So 1.92 for the Celtics is a, is a decent decent bet. Anyway, look, um, head over to protipster.com. Go to the tipsters page. You'll see that on the top of the page. Head in... T- and from there, you can head into the basketball section and you can find the best basketball uh, tipsters on our website. Trust me, lads, some of the best tipsters on the internet, they are sharing their tips for free. So go over and have a look at those. I'm going to talk some ice hockey now. In a moment, we're going to have pro tipster Johnny on. We're going to speak about the ice hockey at the Winter Olympics. But first, a couple of highlights from the NHL. Uh, oh, happening over the next couple of nights. Uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs taking on the New York Islanders and the Boston Bruins over the next couple of nights. Now, both of those are at the Air Canada Centre in Toronto and they'll be hoping that home advantage sees them through on those. They should beat the Islanders pretty easily. They hammered them 5 0 a couple of weeks ago, but the Bruins are, you know, the Bruins are just amazing to watch. They're one of the most attacking one, or just the most aggressive teams in the NHL at the minute. They're, they're just brilliant to watch. And um, and look, and they'll be well up for Boston. They love crossing the border and going up into Canada, and you know, showing the Canadians how to play ice hockey. Because the Canadians, uh, they 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 think they invented it and the way they go on about it. But yeah, they, Boston, they just love going up there and uh, really raising their game, taking on Canadian teams. And you know, this this season they've been so good that um, there's no fear of them even raising their game even even more. There's no odds out yet for this second game. Uh, with the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Bruins. Um, but for the first one, uh, they are 1.8 to beat the Islanders again. I know after beating them 5-0 a couple of weeks ago, the Islanders are not going to be looking forward to going uh, to going up to Toronto again for this. There's another one, a big one then, on Friday night, Saturday morning at 4 a.m. Uh, Las Vegas Knights are taking on the Dallas Stars. The Knights have been breaking all kinds of records for a rookie team in the NHL. They've been just outstanding and I was reading an article a while ago about how the city has really uh, welcomed them and made them, uh, re- you know, part of the city. Which, okay, of course they would. They're a great team and they're winning. Uh, who wouldn't want that uh, in their city? Um, but look, they've won 40 out of 60 games overall. These are these stats are including overtime, uh, 23 out of 30 at home, and they're scoring around. At 3.5 goals per game on average as well. They topped the Western Conference with 84 points. They're three ahead of the Nashville Predators. Uh, they're playing the Vancouver Canucks, who are 13th in the same conference with only 23 out of 60 wins and only 12 out of 30 on the road. Look, uh, the Vegas Golden Knights, they're not a great price to win here. They're 1.86. Um, yeah, it's not great, especially for an ice hockey uh, price that should be, you know, You'd be expecting more like 2.2, something like that. But with the Canucks being uh, just so bad away from Vancouver, the Vegas Knights, they should uh, they should easily be able to hammer a few goals past them and give another win to their um, to their uh, new fans. Uh, joining me again then on the line, we have pro tips to Johnny. And we're going to have a very quick chat about uh, the Olympics uh, the ice hockey games coming up in the Olympics. So the Czech Republic are taking on uh, Russia, who aren't actually Russia, and uh, Canada are taking on uh, Germany. Um, how do you see these going, Johnny? 
Um, quite interesting that uh, Germany made it uh, to the semi-final. Yeah, so, uh, they, if, if you look at how they started the tournament, they, they, they lost to, to Finland, uh, 5-2. They, they, then they lost to Sweden, uh, 1-0. Then they made, uh, they beat, uh, Norway, uh, I think after, it was after uh, penalties. Uh, and then that's where they picked up some, uh, some uh, momentum that they carried on to the other games and they played the um, round of, well, it was called a qualification playoff match uh, against uh, Switzerland. They beat Switzerland 2-1 uh, after the overtime and then there was a huge shock that they caused uh, in the quarterfinal when they eliminated Sweden, one of the contenders for, for the Olympic title. They beat them 4-3 uh, again uh, after the overtime and now they are facing Canada, who are more or less cruising uh, through the tournament. They they have one uh, they have one defeat in uh, in the group group stage against Czech Republic, which was uh, also after after the the shutout shootout. Sorry. So Canada is the big is the big favorite. Uh, the, the low, of course, the odds for Canada to win are low. Uh, and despite that this was a nice, uh, fairy tale run for Germany to make it, uh, into the semifinal of the uh, Olympic hockey men's tournament, I, I think this is going to be the end of their journey and Canada will, will be, will beat them to make, make it to the final. The second match is the Czech Republic against the Olympic athletes of Russia. That's going to be their early game. It's uh, starting 8.40. Central Europe time tomorrow, and that's going to be the uh, the cracker. Oh, the Russians are the favorites. They lost the first game of the ter- of the Olympic tournament in the group stage, surprisingly to Slovakia. Uh, but then they won all their remaining games quite comfortably. They they won the group eventually. They they won uh, against Slovenia eight two. They beat USA four nil, and they in the in the Book the place directly in the quarterfinals where they eliminated Norway 6-1. So they are really on fire. I think the best thing that could happen to Olympic athletes of Russia, or let's just call them Russia in the, in the short version, yeah. uh, was the first, the uh, first day defeat to Slovakia. Uh, they were really fired up after that defeat. They really, uh, the players like Kovalchuk, uh, Datsyuk, uh, sorry, Kovalchuk, uh, Mozikin, were really up up for it. They really started playing well together. Uh, I saw some bits and pieces from the Slovenian game and from the USA game, and they were just brilliant. For me, they are the biggest favorites to win the Olympic title. But let's not forget about the Czechs. The Czechs were are the only of the only team from the four semifinalists that are still unbeaten. Uh, they, they they won the group. They started quite, you know, not very convincingly. They beat the home team Korea 2-1. Okay, people were saying, okay, it's the first match, so they need, they need to adapt. Uh, then they beat Canada up, uh, after the uh, shootout uh, 3-2. So, okay, people started saying, wow, okay, they're improving. Then they beat the, in the final uh, group, group uh, game Switzerland uh, 4-1. And they were all of a sudden first in the group and they had a quarterfinal against USA. It was a dramatic match again. Uh, it was another win, uh, after, after the penalties. So it was 2-2 after, even after the extra time. And Czechs won with Kokos, uh, sh- shootout uh, penalty that won them the game. Uh, so. Czechs are improving match by match. Russians are improving match by match. It's going to be an interesting one. The odds uh, for the Russian, uh, for the Olympic athletes of Russia to win are around 1.5, more or less. So somewhere you can find lower, somewhere you can find uh, higher. Uh, the Asian handicap is uh, 1.5, but the odds are fo- uh, it's are falling down on on Russia to win, and I can see why. Uh, I'm looking forward to this one. This is going to be probably one of the highlights of the tournament. And uh, what the 
the betting uh, regarding the betting options, I quite uh, like some goals to see in, in this game because Russians will score definitely some. That's that's um, that's for sure. Uh, they will. Czechs are good enough to score against Russians as well. So yeah, let's hope for some for some goals. Johnny, where can we find you on the internet? Um, all the listeners can fi- find me on uh, Twitter and on Facebook. Uh, in both of these uh, social media accounts as ProTipster Johnny. And ProTipster Dan, then, can we get your social media stuff, please? You can find me on Twitter at ProTipster Dan, all one word, or on Facebook as ProTipster Dan. And this week only, as Martin is away, I'm covering the Twitter handle ProTipster ENG. So come along, ask for advice, give me abuse, whatever, but be part of the conversation. So that's it then from all of us at the Pro Tipster Sports Betting Podcast. Big thanks to Pro Tipsters Dan and Johnny for coming on and speaking, and as well to Pro Tipster David for his La Liga expertise as well. So if you'd like to get in touch with me, you can get me Pro Tipster Pod on Twitter, uh, Pro Tipster Paddy on Facebook, and of course we're always hanging around our Facebook Pro Tipster UK page as well. We hope you like the new format. Admittedly, it's quite long, but uh, we'll sort that out as we continue to improve over the next few weeks. So, uh, yeah, uh, I hope you enjoy whatever sports you're watching this weekend and make a few bob as well. All right, good luck. Thanks for listening, everybody. Don't forget to check out ProTipster.com, where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips. Check us out on YouTube and Instagram. Our handles there are ProTipsterGlobal. Or get in touch on Twitter, ProTipsterEN or Pro Tips or IRL. Bye.